my name is Gary of Gary's Wares, and I make wooden pipes. When I started off making wooden pipes, I had access to all kinds of power tools, and for reasons that are immaterial to this video, that's no longer the case. I'm back to making pipes with just a drill press, a rotary tool, some hand tools, and my mitts. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do, what I do, and why I do it, and uh, etc. And uh, if you're like me and you live in an apartment in small spaces, you don't have a dedicated workspace, then maybe this is the video for you. And I'm going to tell you how much everything costs. About two fifty. Yeah, about two fifty, three hundred, something like that. Yeah. I mean, I'll go buy you know individually which one. Is. Let's do that. Let's get to it. But yeah, that's what I'll do. The first thing you're going to need is a place to work, like a sawhorse. This is a standard sawhorse that I've taken and modified and it widened the, the spine. And, and now I can actually put something down here without it falling right off and added a little shelf and yada, yada, yada. And I made not one but two of them. If you want to see how I made them, there's a link to the video down below. Also, if you're working outside, it's not a bad idea to have a boom set up like mine. I cover that in the video. And and duct tape a, a, an umbrella to it and here's my clamp light and it may not look like much on the outside but it's got a 5000 kelvin led bulb in there which is a very good choice for woodworking you can check out my review of this down below as well and get a 15 percent discount you know if that's your thing first up is cutting and in pipe making a bandsaw is probably the best choice but if you can't afford that these three saws will do the trick there's lots of different saws out there that do different things, and I won't pretend to be any kind of expert, but the one thing that you want to pay attention to is TPI, or teeth per inch. This is a Craftsman 15-inch medium cut handsaw, and when you compare it to the back saw, you can see that the teeth on this one are much bigger than these, but there seems to be many more teeth on the back saw. This gives the back saw a finer cut, and this kind of saw is more for lumber, that sort of thing. This is not the kind of thing that you'd want to use on purple heart or curly maple here. With exotic woods, it probably costs you a little bit of money. You don't want to make too many unnecessary cuts and rough cuts. You want it to be pretty precise, which is why I use a back saw. This is a cobalt extra fine back saw, and it has 12 teeth per inch, or TPI, and it makes for a much finer cut. Here's what the end grain looks like after being cut with the back saw, and you can see that it's really smooth, and that's going to come in handy later and planing and everything like that. You don't want big nasty gashes like what would be left with here. That would take all day, and it would waste your exotic wood. You don't want that. This is a Stanley coping saw with a blade that's 20 TPI. That's fine. And you'd use this kind of saw for the same kind of thing you'd use a scroll saw for. This blade comes off by unscrewing this handle and you can slip the blade through this hole and cut along these lines and cut out a little hole here for whatever and come out this hole or something. You could do something like that. I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to put a big hole in my skateboard because I'm going to use it for the something later maybe. I don't know, but that's what you could do. This is the curve left by the craftsman saw. This is the one left by the back saw. And this one is done by the coping saw. And you can see with the coping saw, you can do all kinds of fun stuff and, and maybe cut out puzzle pieces or whatever. However, because of how flexible it is and stuff like that, it tends to be unreliable if you want a straight cut, which is why I go with the back saw. Now I say I because maybe there's a better way to do this, but this is how I do this, disclaimer. So these saws have different applications, but they basically operate the same way. So when you're using a saw, you want to put most of your force on the back pole than pushing it forward. And the basic concept behind this is that it's a lot easier to pull a rope than it is to push it. See, if that was a saw blade, I wouldn't have any kind of cut right now. So the back saw with its reinforced thing right here makes it very good for pulling straight back and making precise cuts and that sort of thing, and that's what I use. Aside from just the saws, you're going to need some accessories. First is a set of gloves that you absolutely will need unless you want to get a bunch of nicks and stuff like what I did when I started. You don't want that. So a set of gloves, also a set of clamps. The clamps will be used to hold the stock to the sawhorse and they'll also be used for any gluing that comes later. Also, you're going to need a pencil or two and something to make straight lines with. This is a Woodpecker's Palmini Pocket Rule, and this runs about 50 bucks. And if you can't swing that, that's okay, because they've got other options out there that do the same thing. What I like about this is that you can adjust it for a certain length, and then put it up here, then put your pencil right up there, and then make a line. It doesn't actually make that noise when, when I make a line. I make that noise. And the other thing you're going to need if you're doing this is plenty of water and mosquito repellent. Francis is talking about it. 
Time to drink water, internet user. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> Moving on. Here's the pieces after cutting. These two pieces are gonna become bowls and most of this is gonna be shaped away so I don't care too much about this. However, all of these pieces are going to be glued together and so they need to be plain. In fact, they need to look something a little bit like this. So to do that, I'm gonna use files and some sandpaper. This is a combination rasp that has a rough and medium side that's one curved and one flat. A long, fine file and a small one for doing like the insides of mortises and things like that. The reason you go with files as opposed to just straight up sandpaper is that sandpaper is not uniform like a file is. Use sandpaper along with the rasp because that helps take away a lot of these stupid little lines and that's going to make everything easier. Now that the pieces are sufficiently planed and marked, they are ready to be drilled. Since the pipe is basically just a connected series of holes, there's really no way to get around doing this by hand, and so a drill press is really necessary. You can pick up a small one like this for not too much, and also something to put it on. This stand folds up and can be put, you know, places where it's more convenient than just out and about. You're also going to need a drill press vise and drill bits. You're going to need at least an 8th inch and a 3 16 inch bit. Drill the bowls are going to need a 5 8 inch core box bit and a couple Forstner bits. This is a half inch and this is 7 eighths. So now that they're marked, let's get to drilling. Many holes of various sizes have been drilled. Now I'm going to take these pieces and get all that gunk off them with the file and glue it all up and, 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 and be done with this stuff. Now that all the holes are drilled and everything's glued together, it's time to shape, which I do with the rotary tool. I think I've gone through about six or seven rotary tools in my time making pipes, and this one seems to be pretty good, especially for the price. The bit you'll need for shaping is a high-speed cutter and a sanding drum. Let's get to it. Now that the pipes have been shaped, they're ready to be sanded. And I don't usually include this step in my videos because it's kind of boring and tedious and there's not much I can say other than get this to kind of look like that. And the way that you do that is you use gradually finer grades of sandpaper. I go all the way up to 320 and then I hit the pipe with a buffing bit like this. And this one is ready to be finished with wood bowl finish, which is what I use. It's non-toxic and food safe. Not that you need it to be food safe, but hey, and this is my favorite part. And here it is after two coats. I like it very much, especially this knot in the bowl. That's really cool. And I guess that's everything. If I haven't said it already, if you haven't caught on, this is not an easy, nor is it a quick way to make pipes, but you do get them done eventually.
If you like this video, please like and subscribe and do all that stuff. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters and, and, and things like that. Um, if, uh, if you don't know, this is how I end these videos. It's kind of ramble and I put like credits like down here and stuff and like... Uh, if you're interested in getting some of these pipes, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and uh, hit me up through there and we can, we can work something out and blah, 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 blah. I guess that's, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. And one last thing. Drink some water, Internet user.